This reaction is brought to you by my $5 or more patrons at patreon.com slash Alex Heights. I would like to thank Andreas Glacial, Steve Aldersley, Will E, at HeartGirlVideo69 on Twitter, Ed Summers, Identitech, Jason Bates, Kurt David, Mark Ventura, Mason Frost, Matthew McLaughlin, Ray Schuster, TFG, B Jabber, and David Mannion for sponsoring this video, supporting me, my family, the channel. I appreciate it immensely and I hope you all enjoy the video. Hello everyone, welcome, welcome back to another album reaction. We are continuing forward on our Bowie binge. We took a small break to do, uh, what was our poll album? I completely forgot. Um, I, uh, Band on the Run, that's right. Uh, Paul McCartney and Wings, nice album. Haven't recorded the follow-ups uh, for the last batch of albums yet, but I can say that it was very pleasant. Um, and then we did a couple... Uh, live reactions uh, last Friday, which was really nice. Did Can Future Days and Boards of Canada Music Has the Right to Children. Both very interesting albums. Uh, I liked one more than the other, but if you want to know about it, go watch the videos. So, uh, continuing forward on our Bowie binge here, uh, we're landing ourselves right smack dab in the middle of the 90s. I've been here before, but we're here again. For those who don't know, I do unedited reactions at my Patreon, patreon.com slash alexheights. For $5 a month, you can support the channel and also get a shout out at the front of the video and access to unedited reactions from April, I believe it is, uh, 2021 going forward, including this video that will be 42 unedited reactions that you can have access to. Um, and everyone at the front of the video, got shout out, has access to these. Uh, if not, just a dollar a month also supports the channel and gets you access to voting in polls that we do every two to four albums to break up the monotony of this these discography binges. So if you want to support the channel, that would be the place to do it. Also happy to say I'm affiliated with NordVPN. If you guys are in need of a VPN, which is very helpful for a variety of reasons. It encrypts your data, uh, also helps you access content that is only available in other countries. Uh, Nord is what I've been using for years. I really love it. Great prices as well. One of the best priced VPNs on the market. Uh, and the speeds are just quality. Uh, I can't recommend it enough. So if you would like to sign up, my affiliate link is in the description. Anyway, we are on Earthling. 1997. Like I said, I've been around this area before. Um, last album that we did from Bowie was Let's Dance. Skipped over most of the 90s or the 80s um, and uh, early 90s. I have done outside, by the way, you can find links to all of my Bowie reactions in the comments. I'll have a pinned comment for it. Um, I did react to Outside. I think it's a very interesting and fascinating album. Interesting production, instrumentation, songwriting, storytelling. Uh, it's a little clunky. Um, it doesn't completely work, but it works way better than it has any right to. Uh, and in a similar vein, this album, Earthling, is um, going to be very divisive, I think, because like people either feel like it's a two out of five or a four out of five. Um, it's kind of all over the place. Anything from one, two, three, four. I'm seeing like all kinds of ratings from people I know. Um, and uh, it's kind of classified in like this dance, industrial, drum and bass, jungle kind of a thing. I don't have any idea what to expect with this album. Um, a little bit of techno as well. This is going to be weird. Um, we got Reeves Gabriels on here because I think this is around the time that uh, Bowie was dabbling with Tin Machine, if I'm not mistaken. Um, which I know very little about. Oh, that was 89. That was actually a little while before. Um, but they did a, a second album in 91. And they did a live album. Okay, so this was this was after the fact. Um, I thought that it was mid '90s that Tin Machine was happening, but we talked about that a bit on my first Bowie binge uh, discussion, which you can go find on the channel. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm not sure what to expect here. Um, I liked some of the industrial stuff that he was doing on Outside, and I'm curious to see how much will transpose here, uh, in addition to new new genres as well. Um, so I'm, I'm also, I have no expectations. I don't know if I'm going to really dislike this or really be into it or think it's just okay. Um, we have nine tracks, 48 minutes. 
let's go ahead and begin with the first track, Little Wonder. So far, it's just a more poppy outside. Okay, well, I'm already kind of seeing what's going on here, maybe. Um, I think that was a fine track. I, I didn't really have much negative to say about it or feel about it. I can see people disliking this because it's so outside, like, the rubric of stuff that Bowie has done before. Um, but in a way, that's kind of Bowie's thing, right? I mean, like, maybe people kind of frown on his stuff that he dabbled in very briefly. Um, but, like, Young Americans, like, was his only soul effort. This apparently is his only drum and bass effort, although, like, this and outside of, definitely have the industrial elements. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm curious to see what all you guys think, though. Uh, tell me in the comments what you think of this album. Um, because it seems polarizing just in like a way where it's like people could think that this just doesn't work for Bowie, but I don't think the songwriting is bad. I don't think that's the case. Maybe it's just like the genres, people who would like art rock or, um, uh, glam rock or something like that might not take kindly to this. I don't know. Maybe that's the case, but either way, uh, I'm on board, more or less. I don't necessarily love these genres myself, but they're fun every time I listen to them. So let's go to the next track, Looking for Satellites. Nowhere, shampoo, TV. A little bit of the outside vibe still remains. I can see myself being kind of middle of the road on this one. Um, because while I do, I, I actually am kind of impressed by the songwriting um, and the production. Uh, kind of like with Outside, like every song is interest, interestingly structured. Um, it's just like these these aren't really my genres. I don't, I'm not super into like the more dancey drum and bass stuff. Um, but like his industrial production is really intriguing and it's not bad at all it's not even really watered down per se it's uh it's solid it's i think it's just like people just have this weird whiplash with his music as far as like when he switches genres like some people vibe some people don't but i'm kind of landing in the middle so far uh but these last two tracks they, i've got to commend them they've been entertaining and 
there's a lot of interesting phrasing and, and movements throughout them. So there you go. Battle for Britain, the letter. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um, again, very interesting. Interesting songwriting. Um, like, I like how he, this is classic Bowie. I've talked about this so many times, the friction in his music. Um, you don't have just these straightforward, like, satisfying pop formulas and resolutions. Um, there's always like something in there that just kind of is like a stumbling block where you're just like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. Um, it's kind of like in uh, what is it the uh, the castles, um, like some old castles. They would make the steps like some steps slightly larger or taller than others, and if you weren't used to going up and down the steps, you would actually trip all the time. And it was like meant to keep invaders out. That's what David Bowie's music is like. <laughs> you got to get used to the steps. Um, yeah, that was fine. That was fine. Um, I don't. I think Little Wonder may be the best so far. It's hard to say. But they've all been really interesting. Um, yeah, and, and like I said, the, the juxtaposition of like some pop formula relief here and there, but then all of a sudden you get this weird atonal industrial element come in and it's just like you're constantly being kept on your toes. And the, the pace is so frenetic um, that it just doesn't calm down like ever. So anyway, Seven Years in Tibet, track four. Of course, just when I talk about everything being really fast, we get a slow one. This one is working better than it has any right to. It might be my favorite one so far. Um, maybe a bit long. All of these are kind of long. I mean, that one was long only because it stayed very similar. It was a little more straightforward rock formula. Um, but I, I liked the production and the instrumentation and everything that was going on in there. I thought that was pretty solid. I like it. I like it. Dead Men Walking.
Mikey. Honestly, Dead Man Walking in Seven Years in Tibet, pretty solid stuff. Um, like, the first three were, like, crazy. They were, like, weird. They were super frenetic. Um, these last two have felt, like, more concentrated. And the uh, the industrial, like, weirdness from outside isn't really as present on here. Um, yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Like, honestly, these are tracks I could probably listen to, like, again in the future, which isn't really the case for me with Bowie. There's not a ton of Bowie tracks where I come back to because I love the genres, but um, these have just been, like, really nice rock songs um, with really good composition, too. So, there you go. Telling Lies. That one was okay. Um, not really a highlight for me. Like some of the weirder production choices uh, didn't hit as hard or as smooth as maybe they would have if they hadn't been there. <laughs> um, but there was still really interesting elements in it. Uh, yet again, um, I don't have a, a lot negative to say uh, about this album so far. I mean, I'll talk a little bit more in depth at the end, but track to track, I'm... I haven't found anything where I've just been like, ooh, this doesn't work. So I guess that's something. Uh, listening to this next track is uh, the last thing you should do. Okay, well, <laughs> I mean, um, that one, I, like, so here's the thing. Aside from, like, Seven Years in Tibet and Dead Man Walking, which I actually think are really solid tracks, good singles, too, um, a lot of this album, I can't tell if it's good or bad. Like, I can't, like... If I woke up on the wrong side of the bed today, I may be having a terrible time with this album, but I'm not. And, like, I don't feel like any of what I'm feeling with the music is really grounded in reality. Like, I, I can't critique this. I don't know how. Um, all I know is I'm having a fun time listening to it right now. Will that stay the same in the future? I have no earthling idea. Get it? That was an interesting one, though, because it was way more like it was like telling lies where it had all the weird stuff in it but it's probably one of the weirdest songs on here so far 
Um, it was a little bit insane. A little bit deranged. We have two tracks left. I'm afraid of Americans. Um, decent. I think maybe like, I wouldn't say too long. Um, it was kind of like, what was it? Telling lies. There was one that I felt was like a little more straightforward and just like kind of, or was it dead man walking? Maybe been dead man walking that I felt was like too simple for its own length. But I feel like that's all I com complain about sometimes is like the length of songs. But sometimes that's all I have like to critique because I actually think that what's in the song is good. It's just uh, there's a there's a pacing thing, you know. Um, it, it's more of a c commendation to the album to be like, this is all I can complain about is pacing. Um, I think that was decent. Decent. Um, interesting messaging in the song the production has been like one of the highlights so far production combined with the composition on some tracks it's like whew, man um okay last track everyone law earthlings on fire Whew. And there it is. Um, that was probably my least favorite. Um, I just don't think it was as creative as the other tracks. It wasn't awful, but it was probably the worst song on the album, I would say. Um, kind of a weak closer, honestly, if I'm to be completely honest. But there you go. Earthling. It is crazy. It is energetic. It is weird. It is a lot of fun. I don't know if it's any good. <laughs> Um, yeah, man, th dude, this, like, hats off to Bowie and Gabriels, uh, and Mark Plotty, um, who I don't know, uh, for that production. That was chunky. This is the 2021 remaster, so I don't know if it originally sounded like this, but it was nice, thick, um, good stuff. The, uh, the next thing to commend, of course, is the composition. Uh, Seven Years in Tibet and Dead Man Walking were big highlights for me. Um, I think the first three were pretty solid as well. Telling Lies was okay. Last Thing You Should Do was a little wild. I feel like the last half of the album is probably my least favorite, but the first five tracks were like, uh, one hit after another, and it was a nice, like, kind of ascension in quality, too. I feel like it just got better and better as it went on. 
Uh, but yeah, Telling Lies, yeah, last thing you should do was really hard to gauge how I feel about that one. It was fun in a way. Uh, I'm Afraid of Americans was okay. Uh, felt a little simple, dare I say, compared to the rest of the songs here. And then Law, I think, was just a dud. Um, but man, wild. I, I probably like it more than Outside, just like uh, after all is said and done. Because Outside... It was way too long, and it was just a little too weird. Um, like, Heart's Filthy Lesson, Hello, Space Boy, and Strangers When We Meet are probably the only notable tracks off of that album that you could go back and listen to on their own. Because um, all the others are just, like, way too story-driven and just kind of interlude-y. Um, but this, man... Like I said, first five tracks are, they're freaking bops. And I have to commend uh, Bowie for the, the songwriting chops he really showed here. And Garson did great as well. Everyone did pretty great uh, when it came to the instrumentation. So I'm glad I listened to this. Um, is it one of my favorite Bowie albums? Probably not. I don't know. Um, is it in my top five? I don't even know what my top five is anymore. <laughs> I'm going to have to re redo my list after doing uh, this last batch of Bowie albums. But interesting album for sure. Uh, and I'll be interested and I'm eager to close out Bowie with, uh, with Heathens next. Um, it's, this has been a fun ride and we're almost done. So stay tuned. Anyway. That's all I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Things to plug yet again, of course, patreon.com slash alexheights. If you haven't done it already, why aren't you a dollar patron? Supports the channel and it vote it get, gets you the vote of in, in polls. You can vote in the polls. Um, like I said at the beginning of the video, um, every two to four albums in a discography, we do a poll album, which is either chosen by me or the people on my Discord. Um, and uh, just supports the channel and five dollars a month of course shout outs and unedited reactions and then like i just mentioned the page uh, not the patreon the discord link in the description for that got over 150 members over there it's kind of growing steadily uh lots of nice people over there good community uh music discussions recommendations topster charts memes all the fun stuff uh, so if you want to join the community of this guy who listens to music that's the place to do it that's all i have for you um like I said, very excited to be done with Bowie. We have Heathen coming up, a uh, 2002 album, a little bit more in the um, art rock arena. I am interested to see how it will compare with uh, the next day. Because um, aside from reality, uh, which was 2003, there was uh, just, a, just nothing for like 10 years. Um, and Heathen looks like it might be a little closer in tone to re, uh, the next day than reality would be uh, so this this will be an interesting an interesting look for sure um, but yeah and then we're going to be going into just tons of great stuff that I'm excited for Pixies, R.E.M., Talk Talk, Jeff Buckley My Bloody Valentine, Nirvana, The Chameleons Yola Tango, it just gets better and better, alright so that's it everyone uh, stay tuned for more stuff uh if you haven't noticed, uh, the top 10 single streams are over and we're just kind of changing up what we're doing. Sometimes I'll do live album reactions and I'm going to start trying to do, I probably just did my Berserk uh, first live reading. Uh, so I don't know how that will have gone because I recorded this two days prior. I record these on Wednesday, release them onto YouTube on Saturday. So uh, yeah, thank you everyone for watching. Stay tuned for Heathen coming up next week. And until next time, Godspeed. <laughs>